Coaches, the Varsity Sports Show wants to be part of your team in 2023. We have a proven track record of providing the most coverage of your teams with Thursday and Friday night football. We will spotlight your players with multi-camera game broadcasts, pre- and post-game interviews, and segments on our Saturday morning radio show. With over 100 games broadcast in 2022, we will be exceptional for your team. Call, text, or email 480-220-4629 or info at varsitysportshow.com. this week's Varsity Weekly episode. I'm your host, Mary Grace Armistead, and in this episode, we have a little bit of everything, from covering multiple Arizona events to inside interviews and your coverage of Arizona high school games this week. Now let's hear from Dominique. Hi, everyone. My name is Dominic Hernandez, and today I'm very excited to be doing an interview with Sarah Prince, who does track and field at Williams Field High School. So, Sarah, I wanted to start off with uh, how did you first initially get into doing track and field? So I was a gymnast my entire childhood. And when seventh grade hit, I wanted to do something different. So I started doing track because of my mom. And for the longest time ever, I thought she was a hurdler. That's why I started doing hurdles. But I just found out last year that she never was a hurdler. She was an 800 runner, which is pretty funny. But I started mainly just because I wanted to be like my mom. Okay. So you do. So just in doing hurdles, um, what have you noticed is uniquely challenging about doing the different distances of that hurdles has? So the 100 hurdle, it's, it's more difficult saying like, if you mess up, it kind of takes away the, your entire race. Like it's, that's the whole race. But in 300 hurdles, if you mess up a little bit, you can come back in a way like you, it, the race isn't over. So I like, them for different reasons because I like how challenging the 100 is where it's just like so back to back all the hurdles are in it's a sprint the entire time and the 300 hurdles I like how it's more spaced out and you can alternate legs and it doesn't really matter you can still just do your best that way and so what have you enjoyed the most about doing track and field for your for years so far in your high school career I really enjoy the hurdles I love how there's technique to it and there's just it's not a sprint like the hurdle race is just all technique okay and um I know recently you just broke two Arizona track and field records at a recent meet so just tell me about what the experience was like it was definitely an amazing experiment experience um running the 100 hurdles I immediately after I finished the race I could tell that I PR'd and it was a fast run so I let out like a big scream. I was like, yes, it was just a ton of raw emotion that I was feeling from building up to that me and to that race that I wanted to run. And immediately when I crossed the line, I felt that I had ran that. So it was just raw emotion coming off that last hurdle because it was just a build up from my entire season. Um, and the 300 hurdles, it just amazed me because I, I wasn't expecting it, but it felt just amazing to like, accomplished what I've been building up to. And lastly, what did you feel that you've learned from that experience of breaking those records going forward? You said what I've experienced? Uh, what have you learned from that experience of breaking those records going forward? I would say, well, track is all mental. So it definitely like allowed me to overcome my mental state, meaning like I can do more than what I can put my mind to. And so it's just, I'm glad that I can like overcome and accomplish more than what I put my mind to. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank Sarah Prince, who does track and field at Williams Field High School for taking the time to do this interview and good luck on all the upcoming meets that you have. Thank you so much. I Thanks for it. listening and have a great rest of your day.
You too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dominique. Now let's hear from Hannah. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Hustle with Houston. In today's episode, I'll discuss the Arizona Rattler season thus far and what you can look forward to. The Rattlers, now 1-2, and two, completed their first home game of the season at Footprint Center. The attendance drew in a little over 12,000 fans. The game was against the Tucson Sugar Skulls and resulted in a loss of 54-48. to 48. This is the Rattlers' first home opener loss since the 2016 season. Arizona started off strong, ending the first and second quarters with a lead by one point. Sadly, this was the last time the Rattlers would be ahead. Head coach Kevin Guy was ejected from the game following a miscommunication on timeouts with only a minute left in play. This was Guy's first ejection during his 15-year tenure with the Arizona Rattlers. For the Rattlers' next game, they take on the Duke City Gladiators at Footprint Center on April 15th. Be sure to secure your tickets. After that, the Rattlers won't be home for another month as they're headed to Frisco, Texas to take on the Frisco Fighters, then Tulsa, Oklahoma as they're set to match up against the Tulsa Oilers, and finally the Vegas Nighthawks in Las Vegas. Rattlers will be home again on May 20th as they take on the Northern Arizona Wranglers. Isaiah Houston, star wide receiver for the Arizona Rattlers, is still hosting his camp at Arizona Christian University for aspiring young athletes. For more information and the latest updates, go to IsaiahHouston.com. Be sure to follow Isaiah on social media on Instagram at I underscore Houston7 and Twitter at Isaiah Houston7. Thank you so much for tuning into this edition of Hustle with Houston. We'll catch you next time. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. Welcome back, everyone. Now let's hear from Dominique again, who's at the Sagara baseball game. I'm back here with Coach Joe Mickey. So, Coach, it was a really close loss today, but you guys were really able to keep it close at the end. Just tell me how you were able to finally break through at the end. Uh, I think we finally realized that we just had to string a few hits together. I mean, we, we had some good at-bats. We just didn't get anything really going momentum-wise and found our groove a little bit late, but we kind of beat ourselves a little bit today, and that's probably the hard part And when you get into a – one two matchup is you want to play your best baseball and uh, unfortunately we probably just didn't do that as a as a complete hole today so speaking of that the errors really were a huge factor in allowing a lot of the runs to go by so how are you going to eliminate those playing mesquite again tomorrow yeah hey, we just uh, keep our oars in the water we get back on the horse right uh just telling the guys there's not too many teams that go 162 and 0 and and so it's a humbling game uh and so we have to approach it to to get back on track and and go play our best baseball tomorrow and uh, these guys are prepared, so we're, we're confident in what we're doing here. It's just uh, we'll hopefully showcase that a little bit better tomorrow. All right, thank you so much, Coach Mickey, and good luck on the game tomorrow. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, fellas. Eric, back to you. Thank you, Dominique. Now let's head over to Eric, who's at the Thunderbird baseball game. Eric Castellan back here with Thunderbird head coach Mike Jacobs after their 15-5 to win over Moon Valley. Coach, you had to like the offensive performance that your team gave today. It was, it was good. We uh, I think there's still some things to, to work on, but we put a lot of balls in play, put pressure on them to make good plays, so it paid off today. A little bit of a slow start. You guys had a few runs in the first couple innings, and you guys came out and just, like you said, put the ball in play. We were talking about it during the broadcast, kind of just letting things happen the way they should, and what would you say to that? Uh, I, I think guys had a good approach at the dish. Uh, and that second time through the lineup, I think just being a little more patient, hit some balls hard. Um, Connor Chacon with the walk-off there at the end, we had a good day at the dish. Uh, he was our player of the game today. So, you know, just getting these guys uh, comfortable up there in their second, third time through, they, they took advantage of it. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. 
course. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back. Let's see who Sabrina grabbed for the player of the game at the Desert Mountain Baseball game. Hi, guys. I'm here with Desert Mountain baseball player Kevin Hoffmaster. Kevin, obviously, you know, a little bit of a tough day, you know, wasn't the outcome that you guys wanted, but a lot of positives came out today. Big, you know, big bottom of the third, your home run in the fourth, and then, you know, your big play that led in the seventh. <laughs> your big play in the seventh that obviously led to the extra inning. You know, so many big things that you guys did. What was kind of those keys? Because Horizon got into, off to a good early start, but you guys, you know, kept the momentum. So what was kind of the big key to, you know, bouncing back after those first two innings? Yeah, um, we just kind of trusted what we did in practice, really. You know, trusted our coaching staff, trust what we work on, and we stayed in the game. Disappointing loss, but you know, we gave it our all. Yeah, no, you guys are going to be coming back and seeing this Horizon team on Tuesday. Yeah. You know, in a way, a lot of energy still there. You know, you have to hold this one in the back of your head, but, you know, move forward to the next one. What is kind of that thing that you guys are going to take, you and your teammates going to take from this game, you know, to carry on to that next game so that you guys can come on top? I mean, we're going to carry, uh, take the next game the same mentality. You know, we're pissed off right now. We're ready to fight uh, on Tuesday. We're ready to give it our all again. Ready to battle. Kevin, thank you so much. Guys, back to you. Awesome. Thank you, Sabrina. Now let's see some NCAA women's basketball highlights. Hello, and welcome to another Ref Spotlight on the Varsity Sports Show and the Varsity Weekly. I'm Caleb Wiley, your host. Last time, I talked about LeBron and the two foul calls that he was complaining about post-game. This time, I want to talk about college basketball but not just any game i want to talk about the women's national championship game because uh, i got a lot of complaints to my friends or from my friends and that um from anyone that watched the game that it was very very poor officiating so i just want to go over some of the key plays that i saw that may have been a little controversial so this first play that I want to talk about is probably the biggest call in the game. Um, it was a technical foul on Caitlin Clark, who is Iowa's best player. Um, last game, she went extremely, extremely hot from the field, scoring about 11 points in two minutes at the end of the game. So she makes a big impact on this team. And there was a lot of hate towards this call because it gave her her fourth personal foul technical fouls are also personal fouls so i just want to go over it and go over the rule book to see if this really did deem a technical foul now i want to go over the ruling in the rule book and why i believe this did constitute a tech before we review the play i want to read the rulings i believe completely correlates to what happened on this play so in rule 10 section 4 article 5 and a it says delay the game by acts such as preventing the ball from being made live promptly or from being put in play b failing when in possession to immediately pass the ball to the nearer official when a whistle sounds so now that you guys know what constitutes a tech and have these in mind, let's go over what actually happened. So we're reviewing this play, Caitlin Clark directly throws the ball in the opposite direction of any official. It looks like she purposely does it, even if she didn't purposely does it. It still says in the rule book that this constitutes a tech. Um, she grabbed the ball and just threw it. And I think she even hit the cameraman. Um, I know people say that you can't call a tech there because it's the national championship game. But rules are rules for a reason. 
and there's a reason why those things constitutes a tech um, technically it's like a delay of game but the team was already awarded a warning an administrative warning so even if it was ruled a delay of game it would have still counted as a tech for her um, but it was a personal tech because she did grab the ball and she did just she, she threw it to the stands i mean you just can't do that you, if you have the ball give it to the nearest official um you don't have to hand it to them but just just pass them the ball there's no reason for this um I delayed the game and it clearly says in the rule book that that constituted a tech this last play that i'm going to review was also a huge play because it gave Caitlin her third foul before the half which ultimately she had to be taken out because she cannot play with three fouls and risk a fourth foul so this was huge in the game a huge call and I believe this was one of those calls where it was a little marginal um, it could have gone either way and uh, you could obviously see her push off a little bit I mean she doesn't really push off she has her hand on the opponent's body and the reason why it looks like her hand goes forward is because the defender trips and falls so she has her hand there the defender trips and falls so by default her hands is gonna go forward a little bit I don't think this was um, necessary a necessary call because she didn't use force I mean she didn't use a lot of force at all but she didn't use any force or momentum to bring her down she didn't extend her arm or anything like that so i probably would have just let this one go well that's all the time i have for today thank you for watching the ref spotlight on the varsity weekly varsity sports show unfortunately this is the end of varsity weekly for this week but follow us on twitter at varsity show and tune in for next week's varsity weekly this is your host mary grace armistead <laughs>